Now in this lesson, let's talk about AWS Lambda. Now as you may know, Lambda is the core serverless service in AWS platform. So whenever you want to execute a piece of code, you can use a Lambda function. Now have a look at this image. Let's say that you want to get a weather information from a third party API. Let's say this is Open Weather Map API and you want to get the weather information in every hour and store it in a database. So what can you do? You can create a Lambda function and in the Lambda function, you can have the code to query the third party API and get the data and save it in a maybe a DynamoDB table. And then if you wanted to invoke this Lambda function in every hour, you can write a cron job. So the CloudWatch cron job will invoke this Lambda function in every hour. And this Lambda function will fetch the data from the third party API and store it in the DynamoDB table. And let's see another example. Imagine that someone uploaded an image into S3 bucket. So you wanted to create a thumbnail of that image. That image may be like in high quality but you want to create a thumbnail. So in that case also, you can write a Lambda function. As soon as a image is uploaded to S3 bucket, invoke this Lambda function and create a thumbnail. And after that, the thumbnail can be stored in a same S3 bucket. Now here's another example. Let's say that you have a queue. Now in this case, I'm using SQSQ or simple queue service from AWS. So whenever an item is added to the queue, you can write a Lambda function to pull these messages or these items from the queue and then execute. So in this case, the Lambda work as an worker Lambda function. Now here's another example. Let's imagine someone will add some data into a DynamoDB table and the DynamoDB table will send that data into a DynamoDB stream. We can write a Lambda function to listen to this stream and get this data Probably we can use it to index it in a elastic search. Some of you might not be familiar about DynamoDB streams or SQSQ or elastic search, but the idea I want to convey to you is that a Lambda function can be any piece of code that you want to run without managing a server. And this piece of code can be invoked by any event. So the next important point that you should remember about Lambda function is that they are event driven. Now we already discussed so many different events and in these slides I'm showing you some of these events. One common event is this HTTP events. Now these are standard HTTP events like get, put, post, delete and this standard HTTP event. We can invoke Lambda functions through these events. And this is a popular use case. And there are other events, such as an item is getting uploaded to an S3 bucket. We already discussed it. Whenever something is added to S3 bucket, we can use that event to trigger a Lambda function, in this case, to create a thumbnail of that image. Or it could be like adding an item to an SQS queue. So in this case, the Lambda will pull that message from the SQS queue and execute it. And then we already discussed the DynamoDB streams. So whenever an item is added to the DynamoDB, then the streams will limit. And through that streams, we can call upon a Lambda function. And that Lambda function can be used to maybe index that item into Elasticsearch to optimize searching in your applications. But the point that I want you to take home is that Lambdas are event driven. We will not have Lambda functions running long time. It will only respond to an event and then it will go away. And the next point is that the lambdas are serverless. What does serverless mean? Essentially two things. You only pay for the usage. In this case, you pay only for the execution time of your lambda code. And then you don't have to manage any servers. AWS will manage those servers for you. So you don't have to worry about where these lambdas runs and so on. Now here's another important thing that you should remember about AWS Lambda. Now AWS Lambda is the managed service. AWS Lambda and Lambda functions are two different things. When we get a lot of requests to invoke a particular Lambda function, AWS Lambda is the managed service that will handle those requests. Now have a look at this example. Let's say we get so many requests to invoke this get weather lambda function. 
So if these requests are coming in parallel, AWS Lambda will invoke Lambda functions in parallel. So it's the same code, but it will create parallel Lambda functions. And there is also this concurrency limit per region. You can have up to 1000 concurrent Lambda functions running. Now there's another important thing that you should remember. Let's imagine that this particular A request will invoke this Lambda function. So this is the invocation A. And at the same time, another B request want to invoke the same Lambda. So in this case, AWS Lambda will never send the same request to the A invocation. It will always create another Lambda function. Now this is to prevent a particular request context data leaking to another invocation. But however, these lambdas are running in an execution environment. Now you can consider these lambda functions as containers. Now these containers can be shared among these lambda functions. Now in order for the B lambda invocation to use the execution environment of A lambda function, this A lambda function has to complete. And after that is completed, if there is a B request, then AWS Lambda will invoke the second Lambda function in the previous execution environment. And we call this a hot start. So let's talk about call start and hot start a little bit in detail. Now, when you use Lambda functions, there's something that you should be concerned about. And that is Lambda call starts. So what is a call start? Have a look at this diagram from AWS blog. Lambdas are invoked by an event. So when there's an event, then AWS Lambda will invoke a Lambda function. Now before the Lambda functions getting invoked, AWS Lambda has to download the code for that particular Lambda functions. And after that, it has to create an execution environment with the runtime. It could be Node.js, C Sharp, Python, whatever the runtime that we associated with the Lambda function needs to be started in that execution environment. So you can consider this as a container. And after that, it will execute the initialization code. And finally, it will execute the uh, handler code, which is the uh, code of the Lambda function that we want to execute. Now, the time that it takes for the first two steps is called call start duration. Now this could vary from 100 millisecond to one second. And although you are not being built for this uh, duration, it will add on to your latency of the Lambda functions. However, the subsequent invocations of the Lambda function, and if they happens quite frequently, will try to reuse the same execution environment. So in that case, we call them hot starts because uh, the code is already downloaded and the execution environment is already available. However, remember that AWS Lambda will take out this execution environment time to time. So there's a possibility that 1% of your Lambda invocation could be landed on call starts. So how do we prevent this? Now there are multiple ways that we can reduce the call starts. So one of the recommended ways is to use provision concurrency. Now this is essentially, we will keep some execution environment already created for our Lambda functions. So the code is already downloaded and the execution environment is already available and the initialization code is already ran. So whenever there's a request, it only has to execute the handler function. So the call start will be minimized. However, when you add a provision concurrency, you have to pay extra for that. So that is about AWS Lambda. Now let me quickly show you how can we access AWS Lambda from AWS console. Now I will log into my AWS console and here in the search section, I can search for Lambda. Let's select the Lambda. And that is going to open the AWS Lambda console. Now it will show how many functions that I have at the moment. And if I want to create a new function, I can click create function here. Now there are multiple ways that we can create a functions. We can create from scratch or we can use one of the blueprint 
that AWS provides. We can also use a container image. So what this essentially means is we can provide the Lambda source code as a container image. But when it comes to runtime, it will act as a regular Lambda functions, which is event driven. And it's going to go down after serving a request. And there's also an options that we can browse serverless app repository and uh, create a Lambda functions from that. Let me select auth from scratch and I'll call it hello as the name of my Lambda function. And this is where I have to select the runtime. So if your code is in Node.js or JavaScript, uh, you can select Node.js runtime. If it is in Ruby, you can select Ruby, Python, Java, Go, .NET Go, so on and so forth, depending upon the language of your Lambda function code. And here I can associate some permission to a Lambda functions if my Lambda functions needs to talk with other services. We'll discuss a little bit more about this in the IAM lesson. Now I'll go ahead and click create function. Now I can see my Lambda function is there. And if I scroll a little bit down, I can see the Lambda code. And AWS has added some sample code returning hello from Lambda message from Lambda functions when this is triggered. And then we can set the triggers. So if I click add trigger, you should see we can select from so many AWS services. I can select API gateway, so API gateway will invoke the Lambda function. Then I have to select what APIs it is and so on. Now have a look. Now we set API Gateway to trigger this Lambda function. Apart from the trigger, we can also send the output of the Lambda function, whether it is successful or failure, to a different destination. So if I select Add Destination, again I can select one of the destination from the list. It could be SQSQ or another Lambda functions or Event Bridge. Now these are other serverless services which we can send the output upon the failure or a success of a Lambda functions. Now here we use the AWS console to create a Lambda function. But this is not the best practice because if you are building a production application, creating Lambda function from AWS console is not recommended because if you are to create your Lambda functions in another AWS account or another environment, you have to do all these steps all over again using the AWS console and you'll probably make mistakes. So that's why we are going to use infrastructure as code to provision our Lambda functions. 